Alright, kind of a response video to conference report, at least to some of his language. Sort of talking in general terms about correlates and, uh, you know, description of our reality and these certain stumbling blocks that seem to be coming up repeatedly. Like Professor Anton, the big issue is why something? You know, why is there a universe? So, yeah, it's like this is going to be a a question until the question's answered yeah you can't go anywhere for other people it's okay in spite of the fact that you can explain why we have consciousness in the sense that why it would serve an evolutionary purpose for an organism to have uh, per per competing software programs running in their brain one that was sensation based and one which was logic based um, you know, for that, that would be in a benefit towards survival because they'd have a basic conditioning or mechanism that pushed them in a certain direction. And then they could have an intelligence that would tell them which way to go, you know, in terms of which was the best path regarding that direction. Uh, so something to, to make them chase and then a brain to help them do the chasing correctly. So you can say all that. But until you give them a blueprint of the brain and exactly where the little, the little feeling part is and exactly how the little thinking part does its thing, then they're just going to shut off. And okay, no further conversation until 10,463 when those questions are answered. And it's just kind of bogus. Because if looked at in overview, in the broadest context, um, these questions have enough of an answer. Uh, so to like the Professor Anton question, why is there a universe? Why are there, why does matter evolve? Why does it become very complicated? Why does it acquire a brain? Well, obviously the answer to the second part of that question is, uh, as I just illustrated, because it creates survivable organisms because, a, because chemistry acquired the capacity to reproduce itself. Um, why is there a universe? Why is there matter and energy playing the whole cosmic game? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, but I do know what isn't the answer. And what isn't the answer is because there's some, you know, flumange, giant flumange with a brain, as Monty Python might speculate, um, sitting in a lounge chair somewhere in Uncheshire and he decides to poof a universe and then uh, go eat lunch for a billion trillion zillion years and just let it do whatever it's going to do. That's not the answer. The answer is it doesn't have a reason like oh something logical concocted this idea to create <clears throat> you know suns that burn nuclear energy uh, you know, and, and uh, fuse um, atoms together, I mean, my, um, I mean, energy together into atoms. I mean, that's certainly not going to be the answer. That, that some magic force did it. It's just going to be a process. And whether the process came about because of the nature of it, it just keeps doing it, or because the vast, the inevitable, the the unavoidable nothing cracked and we're the crack uh, who knows but the, like I said the answer isn't going to be solved by doing the, the the cheap the cheapest of God creations which is to say something better than us made it to say something better than us made it means you have to explain where the something better than us came from where, what, what, what's your, what's your answer to that question? Where did the better than us come from? Where did the smarter than us, the bigger, the more creative, the more powerful, the more, all of these things, where did it come from? And that answer is going to be more preposterous than the answer I just gave you. A lot more preposterous. Um, because that's an impossibility, that's a cartoon answer to the question. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I probably haven't undone the problem. 
because people aren't going to be satisfied with that explanation that there are certain truths certain I'd say irrelevant truths that will remain a mystery we may never solve and I just don't see uh, I don't think I don't believe I don't think it can be logically defended that this information is critical I think we have enough board game information enough information detailing the shape the configuration of the board we're playing on uh, to adequately account not only for the board's existence but the play of the game and uh, we don't need to keep strangling details uh, strangling theory for more details uh, than we're ever going to get and to demand them is just kind of pointless I mean, we have to we really do have to exercise how you doing um, you have to use best guesses little gang of boys <laughs> yes anyway uh, we, yeah we really have to use best guesses uh, we're always going to be stuck in that circumstance and uh, it's kind of time. Like I said, we have the stuff. We know a lot of stuff. We know where we came from. And it wasn't a brilliant mind that created us. It was a swamp. A disgusting, skanky, dirty, smelly sea of stink. Uh, you know, and uh, we are the evolution. We are the maturation through a process of billions of years of outright disgusting carnage this this whole attitude of eat consume shit eat consume shit reproduce eat consume shit reproduce consume shit shit reproduce consume consume that's it uh, we haven't been made brilliant by that process we've only been made more capable uh, of maximizing or optimizing or capitalizing on specific environments. I mean, of all the life forms on this earth, we're fairly delicate. Uh, you know, if I start raising you above sea level in a balloon or something, and I put all the little life forms on earth in that balloon, the ones that'll survive the longest or the highest altitude aren't going to be you. Um, at least without your technology. Uh, you know, if I change the temperature, you're the one in trouble. If I change the atmosphere, you're the one in trouble. Uh, so, we're not the best at this game of life. We're just the weirdest. We're just the more complex. Um, but we're not better. We're just, a, we're just a pawn on a chessboard that has uh, a wobbly bottom. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, for all our ego gratification we take from being smart and all this other stuff, all it makes us is kind of wobbly. It just makes us capable of doing something eccentric, uh, you know, like building a cathedral to God, or a pyramid, or even a space shuttle. And uh, that's it, pretty much. Uh, we're just... Uh, there's, we're just another pawn. We just have a wobble. We're just funny looking. We're just funny acting. Uh, so where else do we go with this? Um, yeah, so I mean, the, the, the subject of consciousness is interesting. Um, but, I mean, it really isn't more than a 10 minute video. You know, to get the basics of it. I mean, the idea that it's just a projection inside of our head has no reality. Uh, to synthesize it is difficult because we evolved it very slowly. So, like, if you're going to use, like, a computer model, um, the problem is, is creating some sort of competing software thing in a computer that would represent pain. That's really hard to do. Or pleasure. Uh, you, because our synthetic attempt at it would be too synthetic. We can't really get it inside of the uh, processor. We can't get inside of the the main function of the computer uh, because there's a coherency. Our intelligence built 
on top of the existence of that thing. And so it's all built into it. You can't really separate the two. And the only way we could synthesize it is to create two separate programs. And, uh, you know, one would just say pain. Well, saying pain and feeling pain are two different things. And that's the trick. Uh, so, you know, until we find some sort of... It's, until we could create some sort of mechanism that would duplicate pain in a real way, like the software would burn the wires in the CPU or overheat the CPU or and that somehow could be correlated in the CPU uh, as a sensation or as something uh, it would yeah I see I again I just it's so hard to even imagine how software could do that you really have to have it as hardware uh, but I can't describe exactly what the hardware would be either but anyway, it is just an illusion, and it's an illusion created by a very complex brain, and uh, a lot of, lot of, lot of cells. Anyway, I mean, maybe we understand the dynamics. The complexity will seem rather simple, because maybe there's only 20 or 30 organs in the brain uh, doing specific functions. But uh, you know, until we can map all of that, yeah, we're kind of stuck with a, an answer of. Well, I don't know it specifically how the phenomenon of consciousness arises, but I do know specifically, um, in a sense, I know all the circumstantial evidence. I know all the, I know all the contextual. I know a ton of contextual evidence that will define what we know not to be the truth, and the not to be the truth is, is that we're not doing anything magical. We're doing something completely consistent with being able to exploit an environment just like every other little mud skipper, just like every other worm or bug or other thing on this planet. We just have tools that enable us uh, to consume and reproduce. So there, enough of a video. Yeah, I know this is getting kind of redundant and samey, but you sort of have to do that with language because people keep picking at it. They keep nitpicking at it. So, till next time. This rain has got to stop. <laughs> I hate living in Uncheshire.